many people. <laughs> Okay, this is the RE angiogram on the AP view 
which was uh, LAO and premium, showed the premium on us VSD and also showed the uh, VSD on the that's wrong. The measurement from here is around 6 to 7 millimeter. So we already measured the QP2S, the QP2S was 2.1. And uh, what we did is we caused the VNC with JR capacitor and thermal wire and then pop the wire in the LPA and then use the mounting snare. But first attempt, the wire doesn't look as, as good in terms of the loop and we think it's entrapped with the diagnostic valve. So we try to touch the VSD again. So I think we think VSD is quite big because of the QPQS is actually quite significant. And because of the high, I mean like very high shunt, maybe from the angiogram, we didn't uh, get enough amount of the contrast at first attempt. So actually, uh, I'm about to, to show the echo, um, no, the angiogram when we put the long sheet across the defect and then do the angiogram from the LV again to recheck the fact. Varakan, uh, Varakan, Nagesh Can we ask you at this point of time uh, how many actually would like to close this and there is inlet extension? The defect at the four chamber view looks uh, pretty big for you. Know? And you may not give that kind of information in the VST especially. So most of the things will rely on the echocardiographic measurement. The four chamber view, if you look at the, the, the inlet extension. So, the question. So, we can ask it here. Yeah, we can ask the audience how many of you would actually close this defect? We'll go ahead and close this defect. And those who wouldn't go and, and close, so, so more for far closure rather than not. Are there many people who raise their hands? Yeah, there's good so, hematinetic indication, isn't there? Just be, I suppose, to see what the device looks like when you place it. Shank, the majority decided not to vote actually. There were hardly five, six people who said yes, and there were a couple who said no. Okay. So the majority actually didn't participate. So they are not sure. But all right, let's carry on with the tape. Play the tape. So normally I believe in the angiogram rather than echo, but because of the chunk is quite big, echo looks pretty big, so it's come together. So we just need to reshape with the angiogram. So, when we put the sheet across the defect and do another angiogram, we may see an anomaly all clear. So, we may measure again after we do the angiogram when the sheet is across the defect. So, why is it the same with you? Your opinion on, I mean, your practice, uh, like daily basis? Yes, uh, I will reject both the CE and also the angiogram. Uh, in this question, I want to see if I can do I may be a little bit more very open and premium to show mm -hmm. for the four channel view because I think maybe because the angulation has made the angiogram look smaller than the echo. And this is a measurement after we replace the seven fence from here and cause the defect. So the measurement here. In the guest said he, he, he thought Echo was much more reliable than Angio and he based, he based it on Echo. Sometimes what is that is this tricasin valve aneurysm on membrane and central aneurysm. Do you call the impression of uh, kind of a restriction by Angio? So you have to take into consideration of that loose tissue, otherwise we underestimate and the emulation is feasible. So first question for the panel then, based on what you've seen on the TOE, uh, to close uh, by a catheter or not to close? I would, I would definitely attempt it. Yeah. Uh, I would, uh, with the sheet across there, uh, I would uh, definitely say, see what the device looks like before actually the closing it. This particular case, okay. we can attempt it. In this particular case, we can attempt to close the trans 
but I am not 100% sure because of the inlet extension, the defect is very clearly seen in four chamber gear. Device position may be quite challenging. So, what's your concern with the inlet extension? The device uh, embolizing or the device not configuring well or what? <coughs> sure, John is here. I think usually the issue about inlet extension is the high degree of AD block. Uh, that we see a lot in yeah. Down syndrome patients. But this, to me, this is probably something that we could attempt. Uh, uh, just like what was said, maybe put the device and see how it, it sits and then also cut the rhythm. So, Shai, the majority feels that yes, we should uh, uh, put in a device there and see okay. how it Let's works. Let's the table. But uh, Shai has a question. Uh, the concern is the positioning of the device. That is the main uh, concern here. Apart from uh, Yana said that hard lock, uh, inlet extension definitely carries a risk, but I saw the ECG, ECG showing the plus 60 degrees axis. So it's not really worrisome. If it is definitely more than uh, minus or zero, then I will have a serious look at that. So ECG is looking reasonably okay. This is only inlet extension. There is a reasonable good perimeter and septum. We will be careful to position that in the transition. Okay, let's carry on with the tape. For seven millimeter. Okay, can you see the angio uh, through the machine then? Yes, because, uh, here. It's not running. Okay, so because we show the pictures of that to the okay. This is the angiogram after. So, we do not see if any uh, <laughs> idea coming before the more in terms of the um, device selection, feasibility, or, you know, um, whatever that you think one is changing is, is giving any information to the wall or not? Because when the sheet of course which means we uh, reduce the shank flow. So with the same amount or even more amount of contrast we can see more of the anatomy and we can tell more about the size of the mm -hmm. defect. We can check with the panel and, and the audience says what size also have device to be used or on the rebel, on the rolling days here also. Maybe mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's hiding behind. So maybe um, the can tell us what size he thinks. Can you show me? So are we discussing about the what type of device? Are we using a uh, AD1 or muscular device or bone yeah, device? So what, what's the panel's view on this? Uh, what type of device and how to size it? Shaka, I would use a MFO device here. Uh, I think in terms of sizing, I would go for a 1210 first uh, and see how it sits because uh, of the concern of being very close to your pad. Uh, but I would be ready with the 1412 as well. I think in this particular situation, I prefer to position the sheet in the left ventricle rather than in the iota uh, because I feel that the positioning of the device may be somewhat better for me if I position the delivery sheet in the left ventricle. I think uh, looking at the echo measurement of our 10, one, one particular point of 9.6, 9.8 uh, 1214 device is not a bad choice because I am going to anyway speak on that MFO about the design and all. So 1214 MFO may be looking an ideal option here. Uh, I, I, I shall this Mario. Uh, I'm not sure about the size of the DSD because uh, when you repeat the angiogram with the sheet inside, it seems to be much smaller. Probably the yeah. left part of the DSD is large, up to 10 millimeters or whatever, but there is some tissue around it, so the true hole is probably smaller. So, uh, in, in, at the end of the, end of the day, just choosing the size of the DSD, probably the 10 or 12 uh, millimeter column would be quite enough. But as far as the root of implantation is concerned, I would certainly prefer to implant the device retrogradely, in spite of the fact that you already made a, a circuit and uh, anterior fascia. But it's going to be much easier to place the device directly from the retrograde way. Have you considered that option? Okay, so some fascinating suggestions. Uh, we haven't really considered the retrograde approach as well. Uh, the 
concern here was more at the angle uh, of approach and also the, the uh, possibility. Yeah, they, yeah. The child was uh, these 17 kilograms, <coughs> We required, so we decided to integrate uh, So, play the tape again. Thanks on the camera, too. Can you guess who is this? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. So, yeah, this, this, so. Yeah. Right, so our, 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 our always, uh, you know, our already case uh, for our hospital, not the professor, the track racing. So, track for this, again, uh, we have something like some discrepancy between echo and angio, and now we see, uh, you know, the angio with the shift in. And so, in your opinion, what should be the best option for this? Is it feasible to close or not? And you know, what kind of device or website? So, uh, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be in the lab here with Warren and the rest of the team. Uh, this is an interesting PSD, uh, isn't it? It's uh, uh, very obviously. Uh, on the transverse of the echo, there are some views where the input extends into the inlet with very little uh, inlet rim. Uh, on other views, it looks uh, smaller, so the shape of the defect is not circular, it's more elliptical. Um, the difficulty then arises about the sizing uh, of the defect, and here sometimes you have to, it's not one particular uh, uh, modality that you determine the size with. You know, it's not just the angiogram and it's not just the echo uh, pictures. Um, so in different views uh, with the sheath across, you've got measurements of around 7 millimeters on the uh, transesophageal echo uh, with the sheath across as well, it's coming out at about 8 millimeters. And so uh, that's the ballpark figure, it's not an exact science. Uh, and then after that, you have to decide which kind of device uh, you want to use, whether you want to use a single disc buffer type of device or a double disc device. Uh, and very often you have to just try and see whether it works. Thank you, Shaq. So now, um, you know, you get the comments um, um, from Professor Qureshi. So, that, that the choice is yours. He's here so far. What was your plan to tell us? So we plan to use the double disc device because of the high shaft and the size of the PSD is not that small. So actually we have uh, many kinds of the device, but today we plan to use the MFO device from one tech company. So Dr. Supar will, will, will show you that the size of the device and also the frequentation of the device. And, and what size is it? So actually we plan to use 10.8 for, for closing the defect. So, so maybe you can show me the, yeah. um, what, what is Yeah. for this, as so far as so, it is. Right, in this question, right, uh, 10 is mean to the LV size, and 8 is in the RV size. And sorry, you can see it very clear, but so we can add so Okay, can sorry, add. yes. That's okay, 10, 8. Uh -huh. And okay. the LV disc is a 4 millimeter larger than mm -hmm. the LV size. So, uh, in this VSD, we don't want to oversize too much to our hard rock. And so, in, in this patient, first, from the TE only is quite big, so we decided to use uh, 1210, but after the sheet in is too big, it's smaller, so we got back to 1080. Because the size that we measure in is around 7, so one millimeter larger than the RV side, which is eight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So welcome back. Uh, actually, after this question, we initially planned to have it because we need it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can you can show the device. Yes. And this is a MFO nine seven. Can you see? Yeah. Here, yeah. this part is nine, and this part is seven. And for the this. This one is a forty, and it's a four millimeter thing. And with this side, uh, and larger than this side, it also have the patch inside, which make the occlusion rate is better. And in, in this case, we can uh, deploy from both uh, 
the high ratio or low pressure, but in this case, we go from the anti grade side, so we have to connect with the low pressure. Okay. Um, this is a screw system. In this case, we go from the anti grade side. So what we can see is we see the gap at the upper part of the lattice. Yeah, so I can show. Uh, yeah. If you can put the, the pointer on, yeah. and see, I can show the, the audience where is the gap. Yeah, it's over there. That's a, a nine. That's nine seven, is it? That was a nine seven. So we went the residual gap at the top end. <laughs> you can press the pointer and then. Okay, here. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the gap at the upper part of the defect. I think because of the device is too small. What do you think of this part? Yes, you agree with the CC that uh, this size of the device is really too small for this patient. So we... We only decide to share to the bigger one. Are you still yeah, connected? It's like I've been using all the computers for also. Because uh, when we measure from the gap to the disc on you know, the other side, it's about 16 millimeter. So it means that that area probably. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I was just wondering, can you actually reach to 97 or not yet? No, 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 no. We're trying to decide whether that gap was uh, sufficient to uh, not release and go up the uh, upside of the device. Okay, so. Uh, but you're upsizing to 1210 rather than 1080. It can be accommodated with the 60 millimeter disc. Yeah. So the average is after 1210 is going to be 16, am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think, Chad? Go for the bigger one? Uh, well, I think the option is uh, you can't accept the uh, appearance on the pictures echo as well as the angel, so the choice has to be a bigger device. Okay. So then we agree with um, with everyone again that we need to change to the big one. So I'm, I'm always, I was I was quite that's what happened. Okay, so let me share the echo. Doctor Pat, could you please show the echo? Can you open up? Yeah, so this is the echo after we change another device, and there's no uh, obvious leakage from here. Uh, but we can see uh, the spine here. I think that GR will probably disappear as yeah, so well. The thing is that this on the uh, air before is sometimes a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit big in relation to the uh, proximity to the triclassic valve. So in the future, hopefully, that the company may try to reduce the size on that disc. But at the moment, uh, so the first question would be whether or not the disc is underneath the triclassic valve. Huh? Is it underneath the triclassic valve or what? <laughs> Could you please show that the leaflet is actually moving quite nicely? Okay. Alright. Yeah, it's over there. So, actually, because of the GR, we just need to check that the Dragon's Rebound leaflet. Um, well, we can generally, the GR will disappear in yeah, a short time after releasing the cable. And also, the device will configure to the right ventricular septum because obviously the cable pulls the right ventricular disc and which you touches the tightest volume operators. Yeah. Okay, continue the tape. Actually, is uh, well, in some, in some aspect, it looks mild. This one is think it's more than mild. But, um, but the moment is quite silent. Uh, and, you know, uh, honestly, sometimes we need to accept it. Um, um, because I think we cannot use a smaller device. What do you think, Chad? Yeah, I think that, uh, there's no other choice, really. You've got the right size device. TR is a little bit more. Uh, what we love to do is just keep an eye on things, but more importantly, sometimes a uh, transthoracic echo gives a bit more information about the tricuspid valve leaflets. Okay, so Dr. Ham already performed the transthoracic echo as Chad said to read. Ram Ham is in Juanta. Okay. How about the ECG findings? Because this is a big ESP. Why well, did you hear that? Uh, in Dimanche, you want, wanted to know what would be is, is there any changes on the ECG? What's inside that's written all the way through the procedure and also after the procedure? 
be on the table. We shared the position of the device and the to with our recommendation. And this is a for shampoo view. This is for shampoo view from Transformatic. And then this is TR. Um, it's mine. And here you can see that the uh, device is below the little <coughs> To a little bit artwork, so this is my shampoo view. You can see my ER and no AR from here. And this is chart axis view. Some TR. Yeah. And no AR. No AR. This is no AR. If you, we're going to have to move to okay. an HSC. Yeah. An HSC. Yeah. Um, with this uh, kind of very complex uh, neuronal type defect, which is close to the inlet, uh, you know, portion. Okay, and this is the last angiogram. Can you show the angio, please? It looks, it looks really very nice. So I think that's all we can provide to you guys. Okay, no, that's excellent. Uh, well done, well done. So we're going we're gonna to move off to Malaysia now. I think they're ready to show us how they are off. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Shaq. See you soon.